Welcome to lecture number 7 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Card and Pendulum System, and Gantry Dynamics. Now, in this lecture, we're going to be using the Lagrangian dynamics that we looked at yesterday and come up with the dynamics for two different systems. One is a Gantry system, the other is a Card and Pendulum system. Now, to give an idea what that looks like, here's where we'll, we'll want to get to. A uh, gantry system is like in a shop floor. I've got this big overhead crane. I want to pick up an engine block and move it across the floor. And I want to do so without it oscillating too much. So here's the big engine block. Uh, one kilogram on a wire that's one meter long. Attach the gantry and I want to move it across the shop floor. If I get the control out wrong, it'll swing back and forth. So to do this, I need to find out what are the dynamics of the system and then design the feedback control law. The control law is going to come later. Right now we just want to come up with the dynamics. And this is a nonlinear system. I've got the sine and cosine relationship uh, due to the angle. So the techniques he had back in physics probably don't work too well. A Lagrangian works really well though. If I can find the kinetic energy and potential energy of the system, I can tell you what the dynamics are. So that's where we're heading. That's the gantry system. And the second one, Get that. Is a Cartan Pendulum system. That looks like the following. This is like trying to balance a yardstick on your hand. If I do it right, I can get the yardstick to balance. If I do it wrong, it falls over. This is also analogous to NASA. I have a rocket from the hangar. I want to bring it over to the launch pad. And I'd like to keep it from falling over in the process. Ganesi gets really pissed when the rockets fall over. How do you come up with the control law to keep this balanced? How do you balance the yardstick on your hand? To do that, I first have to find out what are the dynamics of a cart and pendulum system. I've got a cart right here, a mass of high, and a one meter long uh, shaft. So that's where we want to get to. So starting out, let's define the system. For the gantry system, I've got a two kilogram mass up on the top. That's going to go back and forth. I've got a force being applied to it. Probably there's a little motor on the wheels, pushing it and pulling it back and forth. I've got a one meter long stick or a rope and a mass that's one kilogram at the end of the rope. I'll define X to be the displacement of the cart, theta to be the angle of the pendulum. Now, for the Lagrangian formulation, the first thing you have to do is come up with the kinetic energy and potential energy. I've got two lump masses, so I've got two terms. For the first mass, that's two kilograms, the position is just x and zero. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared, or one half x dot squared, or mv squared, mass is two, x dot squared. The potential energy is zero. Again, assuming I've got this leveled so it's not going up or down, it's going to stay flat, not gaining or losing potential energy. So that's the first mass. The second mass down here is x coordinate is the position of the cart plus sine theta. Uh, the y coordinate is 0 minus cosine theta. If I take the derivative then, x2 dot is general, x1 dot plus derivative of sine is cosine cosine theta, theta dot. That's the partial with respect to theta times the partial of theta with respect to t. The derivative of y2, y2 dot is derivative of cosine is minus sine, you get a double negative, sine theta, theta dot. Again, you got the chain rule, partial with respect to theta, partial of theta with respect to t. Now I can find the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, substituting x2 dot uh, squaring it, and y2 dot squaring it. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Gives you a theta dot squared. And that's all that simplifies. So there's the kinetic energy of the ball. The potential energy is just mgy. y is minus cosine theta, so potential energy is mg or minus g cosine theta. Put the two together, 
be kinetic energy at the first mass plus kinetic energy at the second mass minus potential energy at the first mass, which was zero, plus potential energy at the second mass. Here's my Lagrangian. Uh, okay, so far so good. Now, to find the force, I've got two terms. When I take the partial with respect to x, I'll get the force on the base. Partial with respect to theta, I get the torque. If there's a little bitty motor right here, twisting it back and forth, that would be this guy. That torque is zero. There is no motor. But I'm going to get the two terms. So then I've got the Lagrangian. The force on the base, then, is the full derivative with respect to t of the partial of L with respect to x dot, you know, the variable associated with the force, minus the partial of L with respect to x. Now, the partial of L with respect to x dot, here's an x dot right here. Partial gives you 3x dot. Here's an x dot plus theta dot cosine theta, and that's it for x dots. There is no x, so that's zero. Now take the full derivative. The derivative of 3x dot is 3x double prime. Chain rule, derivative of the second term gives you theta double prime cosine theta plus theta dot times minus sine theta, theta dot. And the two theta dots come together, gives you theta dot squared. So that's one term. The second term is repeat with respect to theta. That'll give you the torque. It's right here, and that torque is zero. Uh, but again, I need to include it. So it's the full derivative with respect to t of the partial of L with respect to theta dot minus the partial of L with respect to theta. Partial of L with respect to theta dot. Okay, there's no term here. Here's the theta dot. Gives you x dot cosine theta. Here's the theta dot plus theta dot and that's all the theta dots. Minus the partials with respect to theta. And there's nothing here. Here's the theta. Gives you minus x dot theta dot sine theta. Nothing. Here's the theta. Minus g sine theta. Now take the full derivative. Uh, chain rule gives you a derivative of the first term, x double prime cosine theta. Derivative of the second term, x dot sine theta, theta dot with a minus sign, theta double prime, and this term. The middle terms cancel, leaving the torque is x double prime cosine theta plus theta double prime plus g sine theta. That's the dynamics of the gantry system. So putting that in matrix form, I've got the x double prime, theta double prime, x double prime times cosine theta, theta double prime times one, uh, bring all these other guys to the other side is torque, which is zero, uh, minus g sine theta. And the first one up here winds up being the first row. Now this is actually how you animate it. If I know position, x, x dot, theta, and theta dot, I can sit there and calculate what's the acceleration based upon the force. Once I know the acceleration, integrate once I get velocity, integrate twice I get position, angular velocity, angle, and I can sit there and draw it. So just use numerical integration and integrate every 10 milliseconds. What's happening over in this simulation? This program gantry dynamics, and angle, velocity, angular velocity, calculates here's the mass matrix, the term on the left, your theta dot squared sine theta, g sine theta, uh, inverse of the mass matrix times everyone else gives the acceleration. And then to animate it, given the input, calculate the derivative, and then integrate. So x 10 milliseconds in the future is the old value plus velocity times step size. Linear model. If I want to know about the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, um, that model doesn't really help. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors only apply to linear systems. This is nonlinear. But what I could do is do small perturbations. If I give it a small initial condition and let it run, I think it's running. Um, I'll see it just swinging back and forth. What is the linear model for small angles? So for x small, theta doll, small, I get sine theta is roughly theta. All the higher order terms, theta dot squared is roughly zero. Cosine theta is roughly one. 
take the previous dynamics and substitute cosine theta is 1, theta dot squared is 0, sine theta is theta. I get this for the model. I can now invert the mass matrix and wind up with x double prime theta double prime is a function of theta and f. That I can put in state space form. In state space form it looks like the following. x double prime is 4.9 times theta. Theta double prime is minus 14.7 times theta plus 0.5 minus 0.5 times f. Uh, the top two rows just says my states are x theta x dot theta dot that's your potential energy, kinetic energy. The derivative of x is the third state. Derivative of theta is the fourth state. That's the first two rows. And the bottom two rows information. Now that this is a 4x4 four four matrix of constants, I can find the eigenvalues. In this case, the eigenvalues are 0, 0, minus j3.8, and plus j3.8. What that means is if I let the pendulum swing freely, it'll swing back and forth at 3.83 radians per second. Uh, it's, it also has eigenvalues eigenvectors. So these are the eigenvalues. Here's the eigenvectors. What this does is this tells you the initial conditions. If I make the initial condition 1, 0, 0, 0, then it's going to decay as e to the 0 of t. And what that looks like is the following. If I displace it at t equals 0, that's what happens. Uh, basically, nothing's happening. This is the initial condition decaying as e to the 0 t. If I displace it and let it go, it's just going to sit there and stare at me. That's my first eigenvector. My second eigenvector is 0, 0, 1, 0. If I make that my initial condition, and let it go, here's what happens. It just sits there and drifts off to the right. Okay, that's my second eigenvector. Third eigenvector. If I make the initial condition the third eigenvector, it stays at zero and just oscillates back and forth at 0.338 radians per second. And likewise, make it the fourth eigenvector, that's your sine and cosine, I'll get the same response. Now that's for the linear system. For the nonlinear system, I want to use the nonlinear model. Given position, velocity, angle, angular velocity, calculate the acceleration. And to do that, I'll take this term. I'll call that M. That's my mass matrix. Uh, this I call A. Here is B. So the acceleration is the inverse of the mass matrix times A plus B times F. And the states. This is going to be your x double prime, y double prime. That's the derivative of x dot and theta dot. To animate it then, I'm going to sit there and give it some initial condition. In this case, that was an eigenvector. Uh, u is 0. Calculate the dynamics. Basically, what's the acceleration? Integrate. Time goes forward by 10 milliseconds display the gantry system, um, save the data, and repeat. And what the gantry display does is I know x, that's the position and angle. Uh, from that I can draw a rectangle, there's the cart, draw a line, that's the earth. Uh, draw a line down based upon theta, draw a circle, and that's all this does. And with that, I can get the open loop dynamics of a gantry system. If I have no input and give it some initial condition, it's just going to swing back and forth. OK, that's uh, all fine and dandy. Now suppose I want to control the system. This is an example where 461 output feedback works really well. In 461, we co cover a thing called PID control, proportional integral derivative. This is one if I make the force proportional to the displacement and velocity, where r is my set point, x is the actual position velocity, I can play with the PD gains and get pretty good responses. For example, if I make p equal to 10, d equal to 5, I can get this type of response. So doing the simulation, 
I'll start out at minus one. I want to go over here to plus one. And I'm making the force on the cart a uh, proportional gain of 10, derivative gain of 5. If you play around with the gains, I can get better responses, but just playing around with those two knobs, you can do fairly well. And that's the response to the nonlinear system. Can be kind of fun to watch. And what this sine of sine does is every five seconds, it changes the set point from being plus one to minus one. It gives the step input. So you can sit there and see how does it behave when I change my set point. So that's the gantry system. A uh, gantry system has poles at zero, zero, plus j, minus j, or plus j3, minus j3. And just using proportional derivative feedback, you can stabilize it. Now let's go on to a Cartan pendulum system. A uh, Cartan pendulum system is exactly the same as a gantry system, just change the direction of gravity, so that rather than gravity trying to pull this down, gravity is in the opposite direction, trying to make it fall. This is analogous to trying to balance a rocket as you move it over to the launch pad, or balancing a yardstick on your hand. In this case, to come up with the dynamics, it'd be very similar to what we did before. I'll come up with the kinetic energy, potential energy, then do the Lagrangian. If you go through that same procedure, everything will be the same, except just change the direction of gravity. So everything stays the same. I just get minus 4.9 plus 14.7 instead of the opposite. What that does, however, is it changes the eigenvalues. Now the eigenvalues are plus 3.83 minus 3.83. What that means is if I give it some initial condition, it'll fall. And like before, I've got four eigenvalues, four eigenvectors. In theory, if I just excite this initial condition, it'll sit there and balance. If I have any initial condition whatsoever on the third eigenvector, that'll blow up as three, uh, e to the 3.83t. For example, if I make the initial condition minus 1, 0, 0, 0, it'll sit there and, and fall. But make that just something really, really small. Here's the response. I've excited that third eigenvector slightly, and what that does is it just blows up. This falls over. The nonlinear simulation is exactly what it was for the current pendulum system, except this line right here. I changed gravity from minus 9.8 to plus 9.8. The display routine is slightly different because rather than the pendulum being drawn down for zero position, it's drawn up for zero position. And the open loop response is as I just showed you. If you give it some small in this condition, it blows up. So what we did before is try a PD controller. Well, if I try that here, it ain't going to work. So if I repeat what I did before, here's a PD controller, but the proportional gain is 10, derivative gain is 5. Uh, try that. Here's my set point. I want to go over here. And it fell over. You can sit there and try again, try, try, try again. This system is actually really, really hard to, to uh, stabilize. It can be done. For example, yeah, cheating, here's some gains we're going to calculate in a couple lectures from now. If you get the force based upon position, angle, velocity, angular velocity, get those numbers just right, I can get this to stabilize. So tell it to come over to plus one. It comes over. It adjusts the force on the base. Keeps it upright. Keeps it balanced. How you do this is something we'll be covering in a later lecture with a pull placement and LQR, design of feedback gains. For now, we're just looking at the dynamics. And for this system, I've got a little if statement in here. At five seconds, right here, I just turned off the control law. Turn off the control law, it falls. With it turned on, I can make it balance. So later on, we'll look at, given the, these dynamics, how do you come up with stabilizing feedback control law? So where we're at right now is, given the Lagrangian dynamics, I can come up with the dynamics for a current pendulum system. 
or a gantry system. The linearized dynamics are this for the current pendulum system, the throw in a minus sign, gantry system, and I can simulate that. The neat thing about Lagrangian dynamics is it works. I'm able to come up with these dynamics, even though they're relatively complicated, with a little bit of pain, but at least you only have to do it once. So that's lecture number seven, Carton Pendulum System for ECE 463 Modern Control.